To other news now, tensions in the Horn of Africa have escalated since Ethiopia signed a maritime deal with the breakaway region of Somaliland earlier this year. The agreement gives landlocked Ethiopia access to the sea in exchange for Addis Ababa recognizing Somaliland's independence. The deal has angered Somalia. Well, joining me live here in the studio is the president of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. We have plenty of questions for you, starting with this one. You've called Ethiopia an enemy. You have recalled your ambassador in Ethiopia. You have ruled out mediation with Addis unless they pull the plug on this deal. So how do you expect this crisis to be resolved then? Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, then uh, it was not Somalia who created this problem. Ethiopia has created this problem. They are the ones who initiated claiming that they will take and annex part of Somalia to their country. And but they don't say they're annexing. Well, they say it's a commercial deal. No, no, it is not. The, uh, Ethiopia has uh, commercial interests in Somalia. They have in Berbera, they use Berbera port, and they have a stake of 19% even in the ownership of the of service of Berbera. And the place where they are now saying is just a few kilometers away, a few, few, uh, few hundred kilometers away from Berbera. There is no need for that. Whatever it is, let us assume that they need another port. And this is what we have been discussing for a couple of months ago. The issue is not, will Ethiopia access to the sea? They are free to access throughout Somalia. Where? In everywhere in Somalia. But the question is how? How do they want to access the sea? By annexing part of Somalia and changing the borders of Somalia? This is what's going on right now. It is not a commercial. It is an annexation of territory. So as you know, Ethiopia says it's not annexation. They say it's also not a formal recognition of the sovereignty of Somaliland. They say it is a commercial deal. And I just want to remind our viewers of what this potential deal is. Mm. The memorandum of understanding between Ethiopia and Somaliland is that they would rent a 20-kilometer stretch of coastline in Somaliland for half a century, for 50 years, for commercial purposes and for a military port as well. What is the part of that that's, that, that angers Somalia? First of all, Somalia is an independent and sovereign state. When such deals are taking place, it is the federal government of Somalia who has a legitimate right, this thing to be discussed, not a breakaway or not a region of Somalia at all. And above all, a commercial and military base mix it together and doing one thing, uh, that's one. The other thing, if it is a, a 20 kilometer strip of land in the coast only, how that strip of land and how that port is going to be connected to Ethiopia by passing through Somalia, that's another one. The other one, it is in public domain. Ethiopia said we do this in exchange of recognition. We recognize Somaliland. That's a public and that's official. And they, said, they didn't say it only one time. The, the Prime Minister said, the Minister of Foreign Affairs said, the National Security Advisor said, many other leaders in Ethiopia said. So the recognition is there. But they, I'm sorry, but they have walked that all the way back, Somalia has. They have said this is not an official recognition of the sovereignty of Somaliland. I, we don't have that yet. It's you who have that. No, they put it on, no, they put it on Twitter. No, the Twitter is not the way to communicate between states. Have, have you they, spoken to the Ethiopian Prime Minister? Then? No. Why not? Why do I speak? Because he's taking part of my country and he's claiming we are not equal partners. When he said, I do not recognize Somalia, I recognize Somaliland, which was part of Somalia. Who am I talking to? He's talking to Somaliland. How does this get resolved if there's no communication between you and Ethiopia? He has to. You know, Somalia has not initiated this problem. It's Ethiopia has initiated. It is in their, the poll is in their court. They have to open the means of the conducive environment to, to communicate and to negotiate and to dialogue. It is up to them. It's not us. So what do you say to Ethiopia? I would like to say, Ethiopia, we are neighbors. We are not neighbors by choice. We have a history, long, long history, known. And uh, this thing has not happened in the last th more than 1,000 years that Somalia and Ethiopia was living together as people. We have... a uh, some difficult histories, but I'm not going back to that history, which is difficult. But now, in the 21st century, let the Ethiopia recognize the sovereignty, the territorial integrity, and the political independence of Somalia, the Federal Republic of Somalia. 
Then we are two partners. We can negotiate everything. Ethiopia can have access. They can have deals with us, everything. But not the way they are uh, approaching now. That, that's not the way the modern world works. Have you spoken to the leadership in Somaliland? First January is the time when MOU was signed. On 27 December and 28 December, we were having a dialogue discussion in Djibouti, and we have a very good environment and very good uh, 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 discussion on us. And even when that conclusion was ended, Prime Minister Abiy uh, appreciated and uh, he said, "You, this is a good step for taking towards the right direction." To me, he said to me. But the next day, he signed that agreement. Yeah, so indeed, you were with the leaders of Somaliland two, three days before that memorandum of understanding was signed. Did they, are you saying then that they kept you in the dark about what they were about to do? Yes, they never mentioned. We have been discussing how to unite Somalia, not how to give part of Somalia to Ethiopia. No, this was not the subject of discussion. The subject of discussion was the unity of Somalia, how we unite and how we address the grievances of the past and all this. That was the discussion. What are you asking Ethiopia to do, and what happens if Ethiopia goes through with this memorandum of understanding, this deal? Look, look one thing is very clear. Ethiopia has no right to do that. Diplomatically, legally, it has no right to but do that. But what if they do it? Well, that is another case. Let us hope that they will not do it. Hmm. This is a piece of land that belongs to Somalia, and Som Somalia will never yield whatever pressure that comes on it. We will keep claiming our territory, and we will take it back, whatever it is. So far, Ethiopians, they didn't come into Somalia yet, and we hope that they will not. If, if they come in, then that will be a problem at a different level. You traveled around the region recently. You went to Egypt on Sunday. You met with the Egyptian president, uh, Mr. al-Sisi. Now, he had very harsh words against Ethiopia, and he said they should not try us, meaning they shouldn't try Egypt, especially um, if they are challenging a brother, by which he meant uh, Somalia. He hinted, essentially, that Egypt, or well, that's what it sounded like, that Egypt would be welcome, would be willing to come to Somalia's military aid. Did you discuss military action we with the Egyptian are, president? Somalia is part of the Arab League, and in the, part of, in the Arab League, there is a chapter in the charter that says that the attack of one country is the attack of the rest of the countries in that organization. So Somalia does not need to have a deal with any Arab country because that is a mandate to each and every Arab country, number one. Number two, Somalia and Egypt has a history, collaboration of history for a long time. Even if before we became independent in 1956, when the Canal Suez War was there, Somalia as a people, they were supporting with Egypt. And then all the way, many times Somalia has got into a difficult Egypt to support it. The support does not mean boots on the ground. Okay, that's my question, because I understand the history. No. But my question is, did you discuss potential military action? Uh, no, no. The, we have not discussed it. Uh, military, uh, Egyptian military coming to Somalia. The, and, the, and we believe that the problem has not reached there yet. And that's why he's saying warning and all this. Don't do it, please. Okay. This may sound like a naive question, but is there perhaps a win-win scenario here between awesome. Somalia and Ethiopia where the two countries can cooperate? Ethiopia wants access to the sea, as, by the way, all landlocked countries do. Mm -hmm. Somalia, on the other hand, is fighting the armed group Al-Shabaab. We'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. There are thousands of Ethiopi Ethiopian troops on Somalian territory as part of that ongoing effort. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a way, perhaps, that the two countries can can come to some kind of understanding to defuse this crisis? I have to repeat it again. Uh, the question between Somalia and Ethiopia is not an, uh, how Ethiopia... Will Ethiopia access to the sea? That's not a question. We want Ethiopia to have an access to the sea. But the question is how Ethiopia is going to have that access to the sea. That's number one. And that we... If Ethiopia is ready, we are ready to discuss. But grabbing a piece of land, we are not ready for that. Regarding the issue of Al-Shabaab, Al-Shabaab is not a threat to Somalia only. Al-Shabaab is a regional threat, is a continental threat, and it has been, this Shabaab has been interfered in Ethiopia, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Djibouti, and in Europe even. So Shabaab, it just happened that they are in Somalia, but they are not a problem to Somalia only. So Ethiopia... But, but mainly, but mainly to but, Somalia. Well, let us say, except mainly, but Ethiopia, Number one, they were there as a part of the mandate of the African Union mission there. 
and then they were there bilaterally. <clears throat> when there is a trust and good relationship, such thing can happen. We have bilaterally agreed to come in and support Somalia. That's where they are, <clears throat> how they are in Somalia. But now, people who have been uh, contributing their and adding their blood together to defend a common, to defeat a common enemy, now comes back again, and this is a backbiting. Specifically on the issue of the fight against Al Shabaab, this has been going on for more than 15 years. This is something that already plagued your country, Somalia, during your first term as president a number of years ago. They haven't been defeated. So the question is, can they be defeated? Yes, they can. And we have proven that they can. Where's the more evidence? More than 50% of, of the territory they were controlling, they are not controlling today. They have been squeezed into a smaller area than, to, than they were a year ago than today. And we keep continuing. This operation is going on as we are speaking here. And mainly, these operations are done by Somali National Army and Somali Defense Forces are doing these operations, most of them. So we believe, based on the experience and the successes that we made in the last one and a half year, we believe that we can defeat Al Shabaab militarily. It may take some time ideologically, but military, we will definitely defeat them. The, the fight has been going on since 2006. And as I mentioned, it lasted during the entirety of your first term as, as president of Somalia. This was in the 2010s. Is there a point where you would consider negotiations with al-Shabaab instead of a military defeat? When they are ready, we are ready, but they are not ready. They don't believe a Somali Have state. you tried? No, they don't. They are, th this is a public domain. They don't believe a Somali state. So how do I negotiate with someone who basically does not believe a state in Somalia? This is the problem. The real problem is that these people, they have a global agenda. They don't have a local agenda. This is not Taliban <coughs> who has a local agenda in Afghanistan. These people, they don't have local agenda. This is Al-Qaeda. They have a global agenda. How do I negotiate with the problems of Muslim problems that exist in Europe or in somewhere else? This is, uh, for us, it's our local. President, the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us here on the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you.